Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, and this is case 47 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating use of the laser for treating a balloon uncrossable lesion. The patient was a 66-year-old man who presented with stable angina due to a right coronary CTO. He had a previous coronary bypass with an occluded lima as well as an occluded vein graft to PDA. However, he did have a patent vein graft to a second obtuse marginal branch. He had undergone PCI of the circumflex on the left main, and he had a normal ejection fraction without any regional wall motion abnormalities, which adjust the viability. This is the picture from the saphenous vein graft to the posterior descending artery, so an occlusion with maybe a beak entering into the graft. It is very, very helpful to have those graft markers to localize previous coronary bypass grafts. However, these are only present in about 10% of cases um, we see in routine clinical practice. And this is a dual injection, injecting from the left main as well as the right coronary artery. This is done with eight French guides to provide nice visualization. And what is apparent is that there is an ambiguous proximal cap that arises right at the takeoff of an acute marginal branch. There is filling of the PDA in the posterolateral via septals and maybe via epicardia collateral from a distal LAD. The lesion appears to be long. And the distal vessel is uh, small and diffusely diseased. So in cases like this with an ambiguous proximal cap, small diffusely diseased vessel, the retrograde approach can be an attractive first approach if there are good collaterals. Here it was unclear whether the septals would work. However, he did have an included vein graft with um, a proximal beak that could potentially be used. And that was our initial choice. We first tried to go retrograde through the vein graft. This is typically done using a Corsair microcatheter and a Pilot 200 guide wire, which advanced very nicely. However, upon entering the distal vessel, we could not go backwards into the uh, posterior descending artery. And this is a common problem when retrograde PCI is done through vein grafts. Sometimes the touchdown can be at an acute angle, making it very hard to go backwards. As a result, we decided to try an undergrade crossing attempt. We advanced the second Corsair undergrade and then try to localize the proximal cap by doing various injections. Again, the wire, of course, wants to go preferential into this large acute marginal branch. We did some localized injections through the Corsair, trying to better understand the anatomy, but still it was hard to separate the origin of the occlusion from the takeoff of the marginal branch. So in cases like this, where we have proximal cap ambiguity, there are many ways to resolve the ambiguity. Some of them involve the retrograde approach, which he tried in this case and was not successful. Others involve creation of dissection intentionally. These are the move the cap techniques, like the scratch and go, base and carlino. However, the problem with those is that then require a re-entry is required, which can be challenging in a very diffuse vessel, diffusely diseased vessel, as in this case. We did not have a CT and geography. Intravascular ultrasound could have been an option in this case, but before we did that, we did a geography, and the lateral projection is quite often very, very helpful for lesions in the mid-right coronary artery, provides a, a nice uh, separation between marginal branches that go anteriorly and the continuation of the right coronary artery, which causes down and then to the left. By doing that, we were able, surprisingly, with the soft filter FC guide wire to successfully cross into the distal trilumen, as confirmed by contralateral injection. So this was um, an extremely uh, fortuitous turn of events. However, we then encountered a problem which is not uncommon when true-to-true -true crossing is done with guide wires, which is that no balloon would cross the lesion. We tried several small balloons, 1.5 and 2.0, that could not cross. We tried grenadoplasty, which is intentional rupture of a small 1.5 balloon. However, this did not work either. Then we moved on to the second line treatment of balloon uncrossable, which is combining the small balloons with extra guide caster support. So we advanced a guide liner. However, despite the guide liner and despite using several small balloons, we were not able to cross the lesion, which moves us to the third line, which is particularly useful and fairly easy to use, which is that of the laser catheter. 
the laser has the advantage that it can be advanced over any standard 0.014 guide wire, unlike a therectomy that requires specialized guide wires. Sometimes the laser may actually not cross the lesion, but still may modify it enough that subsequently a balloon may be successful in crossing the occlusion. Typically, the 0.9 millimeter catheters are used, which are the smaller ones, and also we preferentially use the turbo catheters, which are traditionally for peripheral use, because this can be activated for a longer period of time than the 5 to 10 second activation that the coronary catheter allows. So by doing that, we can do prolonged activations. An extreme use of use of the laser is by activating in the presence of contrast, which creates this micro bubbles formation that can modify the plaque. However, this is typically avoided in de novo lesions and is reserved for going through previously de deployed and under expanded stents to modify the plaque behind the stent. So in this particular case, we used a 0.9 turbo laser catheter and we were able with two runs to nicely cross into the distal right coronary artery. This is the laser catheter, which um, very nicely moved uh, through the occlusion into the distal right coronary artery. After the laser, we do have a restoration of undergrade flow. We were then able to change the Fielder FC guide wire for a standard workhorse guide wire, followed by predilatation and um, placement of stents, which was challenging, not surprisingly given calcification, the challenge we have delivering balloons. However, using the guideline, we were able to deliver a 2.25 by 32 and then a 2.5 by 38 that were postulated with a 2.5 and C balloon up to 24 atmospheres. After doing that, optical coherence tomography was performed to check for optimal stand deployment. And what we found is that actually there was a dissection both within the stand but also distal to the stand with those dissection flaps, although more proximally there was good stand expansion and good strut apposition. So that led us to place an additional stand on the distal cap and that provided an excellent final result. We have TM3 flow. We elected to not stand the proximal part of the RCA, although it did have some disease, but instead we left it uh, alone and uh, the patient had an excellent result with resolution of his symptoms. Procedure time was 135 minutes, fluid time 32 minutes, and air camera 1.1 gray with 300 ml of contrast. So fairly um, efficacious and efficient use of the resources. So in summary, this um, case provides several potential lessons. The first is the importance of careful angiography on multiple projections to clarify proximal camp ambiguity. This should actually be the first line approach for clarifying the ambiguity because it's simpler and requires less manipulations compared to retrograde or using the move the cap techniques. Another potential lesson is that sometimes, although retrograde seems appealing, starting undergrade might surprise us by early success, as was the case in this patient. Also, even occluded vein graft can be used for retrograde CTOPCI, however, uh, navigating the distal anastomosis proximally can be a challenge. The laser can be very useful for balloon crossable lesions, as is the use of guide catheter extensions, both for delivering balloons as well as stents. And finally, imaging can be useful for stent optimization. There are two trials, the CTO IVUS and the AIR PCI trial, that show the better long term outcomes with less restenosis and maze by using imaging with intravascular ultrasounds for stand optimization. Thank you.